From Barangaroo Studios, this is the COB, brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission. Well, hello, this is the COB, all the stuff you need to know about the day in business markets. I'm Kyle Rotter and uh, joined by Danny Akuye. Uh, Danny, Another negative day on the market, that uh, rate hike from the RBA continuing to bite investors. Absolutely. It looked like it uh, ended uh, towards the lows of the day, so mm. off, you know, 1.13% I'm getting. What's interesting is you actually saw some love apart from the golds, which were very on vogue today post that rally in the gold price overnight. But just looking here, I've just got a little bit of green on screen with um, the likes of Telstra and TPG, but otherwise... Yeah. Much um, strength there? Or are you talking about a sort of a, a non-trivial move perhaps? 0.6% you know? on Telstra. Yeah, so maybe some defensive buying. But generally, mm. um, really everything very much in the red with energy, you know, taking a big, big hit after that 5% fall in Brent. Materials out of favour. Um, consumer staples actually didn't too badly. Healthcare down about a percent. Yeah, financials, no love there. And of course, real estate off another percent. Yeah, so there's the uh, CBO before you now. That's uh, CBO 200 index. That's down 1.15 percent. And well, I think it was 0.92 percent for the CBO 200, or maybe it was the ASX 200 yesterday. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if you put those two together, since 2:30 yesterday afternoon, since we've set, had that surprise rate hike, it's about a 2.1 percent drop for the market. So fairly significant uh, move, relatively speaking, uh, after that rate rise surprise. And I suppose that takes us well to the uh, three themes for today. And uh, well, rate risks bite. And that's not just locally here. It's also mm. the fact that we're heading into uh, the Fed tomorrow morning, the FOMC decision tomorrow morning in the ECB uh, tomorrow night. Absolutely. But we've also got some concerns coming back through the US financial system as well. So we're really dealing with a, a pretty complex environment. Yeah, we've had some really interesting chats with a couple of guests this afternoon just talking about regional banks. And there is a view by uh, a few of them that they really should let some of these banks, you know, go and not bail mm. them out. But the big question, of course, if the US does that, what are the ramifications for the markets? Mm. But it doesn't look at the moment with the shorters really getting their teeth in. And as the previous guest said, if you can get 5% in money market, and on average, it's something like, you know, 0.2% on your bank deposits, yep. they have a structural problem in the US with deposits in banks. It's a huge issue and it's so mm. complex. I mean, we've been talking about it a lot just in the mm. newsroom, haven't we? Trying to get around the, the sort of the dynamics and the plumbing of the, the, the financial system. You know, it's uh, it's really, really complicated. But I mean, the simple fact of the matter is just like you said, if you can get 5% in an asset that is <laughs> Why are you less, leave it in less the risky than a bank deposit, <laughs> sit, sit in a money market fund, you, you, you know, happy days. Backed by so, T-bills, exactly. Exactly. So, mm. I mean, it's just the rational thing to do. So this is really complicated, but um, you know, the next couple of days, clearly going to flesh out some of these issues. With, with these central bank meetings. But uh, we'll push on because I thought I'd try and focus on just a little bit of positive news mm -hmm. because if you have gold in your portfolio, uh, well, that's the sector I thought I'd, I'd take a look at because everything's basically lower today other than actually so obviously with some of the telcos. But if you've got gold, uh, gold names, there you have it. Uh, that's where the, the, the strength was to be, to be found today. Absolutely. And uh, just a repeat of what you saw over in the US, some of their big gold miners up strongly as well on the back of uh, that higher gold price. Risk off. Risk off indeed. And uh, well, let's get across to some of the corporate news of the day. And uh, we'll go thick and fast. But uh, Nine is warning of rising costs, saying it continues to expect both growth in revenue and earnings in FY23. Earnings are expected to come in between 590 to $600 million, with TV revenue down to the very low single digits in FY23. Uh, speaking at that Macquarie conference, CEO Mike Sneesby warns the ad market will remain challenging, but in the current half, still expects to grow its share of all key ad platforms. Yeah, and JB Hi-Fi says that sales growth has started to moderate from the first half of full year 2023, saying it saw 0.8% growth in its Australian division um, in its third quarter. Sales in the company's New Zealand division were up 10.8%. Meanwhile, its subsidiary, The Good Guys, reported negative 3.8% in sales in the update. Indeed. And uh, well, it might be good. We've got domain there too, also in focus. But um, we'll push on uh, because JB Hi-Fi was mm. stock of the day today. And uh, well, we had Andrew Gagan with Andrew Whelans and Henry Jennings having uh, a little bit of banter about whether they'd buy JB Hi-Fi here.
JB Hi-Fi, briefly, the result was okay. I note the shorting positions have started to increase again. They were one of the most heavily shorted companies back in 2019. That backed off right into sort of the beginning of this year, but I note the shorting positions are starting to rise there. So it's probably a hold, but it is a very well-run business. I think I have to agree with my friend, Andrew. Um, certainly, you know, JB Hi-Fi, if you're gonna be in uh, retail or discretionary spending, these guys, are the good guys in the space and they really do know how to run it and they have done a pretty good job i have to say but obviously they're heading into some headwinds at the moment solid business definitely a hold eight percent of this thing is actually shorted so you have to be a little bit careful there surprised to be honest that we didn't see a bit of a knee-jerk reaction higher from some of those shorts covering on the back of those results which weren't terrible they were very solid i think solid is going to be one of the watchwords of uh, of confession and uh, bank reporting season but uh, yeah for me it is a hold so a hold there but acknowledging that uh, well it's a very very good company yeah, in fact great company um a little anecdote put on that personal anecdote um 30 years ago before the company was even publicly listed. Um, my dad's biggest client for his print company was print, printing off those uh, JB Hi-Fi plastic bags <laughs> and then lost them as a client and well, JB Hi-Fi went in that direction and well, dad's doing all right, I guess, but <laughs> anyway, we'll push on. Um, let's get to uh, our guest for the next 15 minutes and uh, well, we welcome Mark Gardner from Macro Capital back to the desk. Um, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Hey. Um, we said we, we, we wouldn't ask, we won't talk about it too much, but RBA, that's, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, look, it obviously took people by surprise. Um, I think the, the AFR run like a shadow um, RBA, but they were sort of saying hike. I think I, I'm impressed that they took the unpopular choice, which was the nece- I think in in my view is the necessary choice. Um, the interesting part to come out of it, I guess, was the um, was the drop in productivity. I mean, one way you get yourself out of inflation is increase in, pro- in, in efficiency and productivity. Uh, or you bludgeon the economy with interest rates. Um, the fact that we've got um, Productivity dropping, you know, 4.2 percent over the year, I think, is a is a really valid reason for the RBA governor to, um, you know, to be fearful that inflation is going to be fairly stubborn. So, um, you know, we'll obviously, I, I always thought it would be coming at some stage uh, with a pause, um, and you know, whether a, m- a month or two makes any difference at all, I, you know. We, because we're so close to it, I think you know there's, mm. you'll have your fin twits and everything up in arms. But <laughs> look, it's it's only because they were wrong, um, and, and you know if you if you average it out to you know we were we were all expecting at least one more hike sometime in the next three months. Well, maybe that was it, and they just brought it forward. Like it, um, you know, it, it really does. I mean, I I didn't notice in the papers the day before. You know, we're calling the end of you know drop in housing prices and everything. I I think. Um, I think that might have had something to do. We, the, the Fed tries to do it as well. Is you know people people skip ahead too quickly, mm. and they need to they need you know not only um, use those monetary policy tools to tighten the money supply, but they also you know denting confidence and by via jaw burning is a is a big part of what they do as well. So maybe maybe that sort of brought you know brought things up a little bit for the RBA, and they just wanted to knock it on the head because. If they let it run, yeah. they're just going to have to do more, and it's going to make it, all we're doing is kicking the can down the road um, for the problem. So, do you think both investors and um, uh, people in general, the muscle memory is so strong, and they have this thing that you know, well, you hike, but then something breaks, and we ease, and and everybody seems this time around to be very impatient about the process because it is a process; it just doesn't mm. necessarily happen like it did in March 2020, in April 2020, yeah. because where we shut down economies, it's very different. Do you think that's part of the problem at the moment, Mark? I, I, we have been talking about this for a very long time, um, and, we, and they are fairly unprecedented um, circumstances as well, um, because all of this unwinding was happening leading into 2019, COVID hit, um, and then you had a situation where it was just, it was a fire hose from both fiscal and monetary policy. and. Um, thinking that you know the pandemic would last much longer than it did we got a vaccine we got back to normal a lot quicker um than than what anyone really thought so you know it's it was you know unwinding that um we were obviously going to have really you know wild prices and we just look we've got to get under control because it what it you know what people i think keep forgetting is is 
it's either a problem now or it's a problem in future. The problem's not going away if we just you know leave monetary policy as it is. There'll be some pain somewhere. Um, economic cycles have happened you know for eons. So we just mm. you know it will be you know a situation where we just that's why the, it's so important that that RBA remains or those central banks remain independent is because it's not a popularity contest. Mm. Sometimes you've got to make the hard choices, which politicians don't. And I was. It was really refreshing to see that um, the Treasurer as well wasn't, isn't, you know, looks to be leading in the federal budget, not going to be irresponsible and turn on the fiscal tap, because that just undoes all of that work. So we, we want a um, situation where even governments have got to get back to not running deficits. You know, we haven't had a, a, um, a budget surplus in the US since Clinton, um, the first Clinton. Um, <laughs> the, so, you know, that's, that's 2000 and... 2007 or even you know prior to that before, so yeah, well, before, well before well before that. That. so yeah. i mean we we just we need to stop spending and spending and increasing the money supply to fix it and and you know maybe have some have some sort of discipline because otherwise it will lead to you know bigger problems Let's move on to the Fed then, um, because that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Yeah. Um, RBA will be probably old news or old enough news, and you know we'll be picking apart this, this statement and then obviously the press conference. But I mean, 25's baked in. I mean, is the is the real question here the language and guidance when it comes to uh, future moves or or the perhaps even higher for longer narrative? Because as we were just talking about, I mean, rates is, rate cuts are still being priced into the you know back into this year, maybe start of next year for for the US. Yeah, look, I I still think that rate. Um, you know, all the talk of rate cuts, pricing of the yield curve, I think that's just a symptom of um, how high the volatility was in bonds. I think those, yeah. those, will, those will correct themselves. I mean, it's just people got caught off guard and margin calls. Um, truth be told, like, I, there is, the Fed's been really clear that there's, there is no chance of any rate cuts this year. Um, and look, I, I think they'll probably take a similar tack to the RBA and look, whether they, whether they actually raise, you know, twice more after this or once more after this or whatever, I think the opportunity really is to really, um, you know, put the, um, a nail in the coffin of inflation is to talk tough now and then, you know, and then take it back and, and ease off once things start to turn um, later down the track. But, you know, if we, if, they, if central banks keep giving people hope like this and people keep talking about rate cuts, it's, it's counterproductive. So we just, it just, the, the quicker we deal with it, the, the shorter the recession, basically. So if we want to be forward thinking, you know, it, they should probably, in my opinion, go 25, talk tough, and mm. then look, they can always not, you know, not do those rate hikes. But if they talk tough, it may, may scare people into pulling back, and that'll start to deal with inflation overall. Yeah. And just in terms of, we're starting to see a bit of confession season coming mm. through, and um, there's definitely issues with costs. Yeah. Uh, inflationary pressures. Um, they're very much a, a winners and losers market in terms of share prices reacting to this. How are you seeing um, these confession season? Is it is it pretty much as expected given how much inflation's gone through the system? Um, yeah, particularly labour costs. I mean, you can't have record low unemployment and not have labour costs. Obviously, what the RBA governor was talking about as well, it leads to drops in productivity because everyone gets super comfortable in their jobs. Um, you know, economists regard 4% or thereabouts as full employment and anything below that's counterproductive for the economy. So, you know, that's where, I mean, we our, our RBA is more focused on inflation. The US has got mild things in their mandate about um, employment as well, but, you know, 3.5% unemployment is not healthy in the long term. It leads to these problems. Um, and higher business costs. So when we saw a lot of the quarterly updates from the miners, nearly every one of them had, mm. you know, tight labour markets, tight costs. It'll increase production costs, etc. That's where that second wave of inflation generally comes from: is um, services. I think we've got um, services PMI maybe tonight as well mm. um, in the US. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think there's been a few at the Macquarie conference. Um, my, I think uh, Polly Novo and um, I think there's one other today that, that was up there that dropped about 7 or 8%. They might be asking for a reduction in fees to present next year. <laughs> but, um, but I think uh, Jumbo Interactive did quite well. Uh, it was U Media, sorry, that right. um, yeah got, got a bit of a... But a Amcor's been absolutely slammed. I mean, a big cap off 9%. They, yeah, they da- I think they did downgraded, sort of downgraded yeah. their guidance. So, mm. uh, and that's a, that's a wafer-thin margin business yeah. as well. Like, so that's where... 
I've had that one on the call quite a few times and look, it looks like a great business, but when your margin is like, is, is that big, you don't have much wiggle room to make a mistake. And that's where, you know, your, your management's got to either have a crystal ball or be almost lucky to get through those periods. So that's where you want to be going at the moment, really good management teams, really fat margins and some pricing power. And, um, you know, and they're, they're probably the, you know, the sort of companies and, you know, no, nothing with really high debt or, um, you know, good cash balance sheets because, you know, we, 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 we will eventually get through this, but mm. if you're a high quality companies will tend to, um, you know, buy up some cheap, you know, acquisitions here and there over, um, over tough periods. And, you know, that's just, you know, they're the sort of companies you want to be involved in. Mark, might wrap it up there because it's uh, just a good note to end it on, I think. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll leave it there for Thank another you. day, but we'll talk again soon. Mark Gardner from Macro Capital. Okay, let's push on and uh, we'll talk about very quickly what's on overnight. And I, I think we've well covered it. And I think it's yep. pretty well known if you've, if you've been sleeping under a rock for the, for the last few days, uh, this is what's coming up, ISM Services BMI. But the FOMC statement, 25 uh, basis points is expected. And well, of course, Danny, it'll be about that commentary. Absolutely, whether we're going to get a very hawkish Mr. Powell or what he will say. Well, on to the leaders and laggards, starting with the leaguers, leaders, I should say, few and far between, but it's oh, certainly, uh, well. Looking very sparkly, isn't as, it? Yeah, it's almost. <laughs> 24 a, carats brings to mind. It does, it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the only thing more gold laden than uh, the Danny at the moment is, uh, is that screen in front of us. So, uh, this, <laughs> I'm so sorry, it was too easy. Um, but there we go. Um, gold, <laughs> she's hit me off screen. You can't see that, but um, she, she's giving me a good whack. Um, and, and rightfully so. But uh, th there you can see. Basically, it's a safe haven play into, into gold. Um, it's almost an injustice that uh, we're putting these stocks up with, with green uh, text at the moment because it's really the only area of the market to, yeah. to perform reasonably well whatsoever. Maybe just running through Gold Road up over 4%, West African Resources up over 4%, Ditto for Evolution Mining, Silver Lake almost got there, and uh, Regis, you know, around 3.6%. So some really good moves there for the Aussie gold players. Yeah, definitely. And mm. I mean, you know, if the, the Fed doesn't pull through with something hawkish tonight, and you know, it doesn't take much for the markets to look for something that signals, you know, maybe a pause, maybe you can't remember the disinflation hysteria at the start of the year. Well, I mean, that would be probably positive for gold. And, you know, we've been talking about the bank risks already. So uh, at a area of the market that's performed strongly so far this year, performing strongly today. Uh, let's look at the laggards, however, and we just ah, spoke about Amcor and, and Polynovo. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, the confession, uh, uh, we'll call it the, the confession conference. It just seems to take victims every day. Yeah, well, indeed. But it just shows you that business conditions aren't easy out there. No. And I think, you know, Mark touched on it. We've got lots of labour cost pressures. We've got the consumer that's becoming more sluggish when it comes to goods. It's still robust in services. Um, I think Ramsey's got problems with one of their acquisitions, but ARB, which has been a favourite, um, I'm, I didn't catch up on that one, but that's almost 6% off. So uh, really, in stark contrast, in April, when there was a lot of love for stocks, confession season, definitely seeing a you know divergence in share price performance with companies that are downgrading expectations or guidance, are clearly being, you know, smacked around the chops, so to speak. Definitely. And I, I mean, I think this is the thing, isn't it, is that, you know, these are great uh, examples of trying to find forward-looking indicators, if we can, of, you know, future economic activity, if nothing else. And, you know, as a bit of an aside, you know, I was talking to, to Jared Kerr today about, you know, Kiwi uh, employment figures, which were very, very strong again, but he said it's just, there's the weakness is coming through the pipeline. It's just not in the, the official data yet. Yeah. Funnily enough, I was actually talking to a mate of mine as well at Boxing, who is a uh, recruiter, who said, yeah, he thinks it's, it's going to be pretty pretty nasty out there fairly soon. He works with executives, but nevertheless, uh, it's just not in the data yet. So just have to wait and see. But there you go. These companies listen to them because they've uh, they've got boots on the ground. Okay, and here's uh, Mark Garner's favourite part of the episode. This is where we look at the small caps of the day and uh, Ooh, Empire Energy. You know that one? No, no. Twenty-eight percent. Apologies, I don't know that one. We've got a whole new list today. Tamburan, this is amazing. Fifteen percent. This is this is great. Pengana yeah, the, the, Capital, thirteen point yeah. eight. Electro Optic Systems, ten point six. And yeah. 5E advance, 9.5%. Some yeah. chunky moves there. So in that in that space, there'd be some very happy shareholders. Yeah, and a few new names here as well. Whoever had the uh, the Scrabble bag out there just um, <laughs> has obviously pulled a few winners out for us today, or at least something different. Uh, the the laggards, you can see them there yourself. We won't uh, 
labor on the point by any means uh, small cap losses you, you you obviously accept volatility there but um danny uh, it's been another big day i've got a feeling it's going to be another big one tomorrow indeed but at least we are living in interesting times if nothing else there's nothing, nothing worse else. than boring markets yeah exactly uh, volatility can indeed be your friend at times and well certainly for us uh, nerds out there enjoy speaking about all that is going on uh, but we might wrap it up there for another episode of the cob remember you can catch up on all the news and interviews throughout the day on your website now till tomorrow morning have a great night Bye. The COB is brought to you by eToro. Invest in ASX shares with $0 commission.